Hi, my name is Mandolin Petrin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today won't exactly be a tutorial, but I will be telling you how I published my first trilogy, The Owens Chronicles. It might be a bit repetitive if you've been listening to all the videos, but I'm somebody who really enjoys finding out how other people did things. Even if it wasn't necessarily perfect, I like learning from other people's mistakes so that I don't have to make the same ones. So I'm going to lay it out there, everything that I did to publish my series, whether it was good or bad, and I'll tell you what I would have done differently. But this is just um, how I published The Owens Chronicles. So the idea first came to me a really long time ago. It was around the time of Twilight and Vampire Diaries and all those shows where I really enjoyed the concepts and the characters, but I was just kind of tired of vampires. So I wanted to think of some other kind of mythological creature that wasn't a vampire. So I came up with the gifted. Gifted are a subset of humans with some specific task that they have to accomplish so that even if they die, they'll just come back to life and keep coming back to life until they accomplish what they were set out to do. When they come back to life for the first time, they discover some kind of a gift. Either they can run fast, they can see through walls, basically they develop a superpower, but you only get it after you die for the first time. I thought that this was a really cool concept and I was really proud of it, which is why I was reluctant at first to write out the story, because I thought that I would be a lot better at writing later on, so I should just save this story and write it later when I was more experienced and had a better following and knew what I was doing. In November 2014, I participated in my first NaNoWriMo, which is the National Novel Writing Month, where I had one month to write 50,000 words. I decided that I would write book one of the trilogy, and I called it Emily. But that didn't work out because I no longer wanted my main character to be called Emily, um, for personal reasons, as well as Emily was very similar to Embry, so I would call both of them M, and I thought that might be confusing. So I did a lot of research into names and what they mean and stuff like that, and in the Owens Chronicles, there's a plot that revolves around bearers of the crescent moon, and so I looked a lot into, like, moon signs and symbolism and stuff like that, and I thought that Lucy was a lovely name for my main character instead. I was so excited, I went to tell my mom that I, I fixed it, there's no more problems with Emily and Embry because I'm just going to call her Lucy from now on, at which point I realized that the other male character in the story was called Lucas at the time. So I went from having Emily and Embry to having Lucy and Lucas. I did a lot more research and found the name Gabriel, uh, which is like a protector, and I really, really liked that, and it really fit with um, Lucas's personality. Um, so my main characters became Lucy, Embry, and Gabriel. If ever you are uh, coming up with names for your story, try to make them not too similar. Ideally, if they could all start with a different letter, that would be really great, but you don't want to have names that are so similar that people can't tell them apart anymore. With my 50,000 word goal, I was going to write book one of the trilogy. Uh, when I got to 50,000 words and realized that I didn't have enough story left to write two more books, I decided to just make book one longer and to make it a standalone novel instead of a trilogy. And I clocked in my first NaNoWriMo at 60,000 words. Then, as is my habit, I put it aside. You know, to wait until I knew what I was doing and was more talented and a better writer. In August 2019, when I published Shards of Glass, I needed to find another book that I could put the link in at the back of the first book so that I could draw my readers and bring them somewhere else after they finish reading Shards of Glass and I decided to use my trilogy because I was back to calling it a trilogy. So I put Prophecy up for pre-order which there's no going back after that because if you fail to uh, live up to one of your Amazon pre-orders you're no longer allowed to do pre-orders for the next 12 months which doesn't really matter if you don't publish frequently but I plan to be publishing a lot of books. At the time I was going to publish one every three months so I had to meet my deadline. In August, after the book was on pre-order, I decided to plot out the series, um, making it another trilogy instead of just a standalone novel that it had become. So I used the stories and the plot points that I already had in my standalone novel and I spaced them out across a trilogy. So I took the, um, the Hero's Journey uh, plotline and I laid it out so that Act 1 coincided with Book 1, uh, Act 2 was Book 2, and Act 3 was Book 3 and found all the different plot points and connected them along the story plot and each book's plot. And then I started writing. My goal was to have written a first draft of all three books by the time I published book one in November, so I'd be able to go back and put little hints or little details or interesting things throughout the series so that when you got to the big reveal at the end, you'd be like, oh my god, I saw this coming even though you didn't really. also ordered a professional cover. I chose a company called 100 Covers, 
because I knew that it was going to be a series and they had a deal where if you buy the first book of a series you get all the other ones at 50% off and they'll even throw in a series like a box set kind of a thing and that worked perfect for me so I ordered my cover which you have to answer a bunch of questions including like what your characters look like, any big uh, symbols or location. They ask for a description of your novel which is really hard for me. To this day I still don't know a succinct way to describe what the Owens Chronicles are about. So I had to fill out all these things and I talked with the designer and they came up with something that was really really awesome and I got to uh, play with the colors and things like that to try and make it more what I had in mind. I did a poll on my Instagram and finally we settled on this pretty cover. In my head I see her as lifting her dress as she's running into the forest but other people have said that she's just there waiting which is not what I was going for but you know you live and you learn. I finished my first draft on September 16th. The next thing I did is I reread it. Um, I made notes first of all on things that I needed to change. Uh, for instance, some of my math was wrong or some things I needed to put a little bit more research or I needed to decide things and I had notes in the margin like, does she know about this? Uh, would she act this way? What is he hiding? You know, all kinds of things and if there's like something that I hinted at at the beginning of the book, I was like, this better come back later. So it's just a bunch of different notes for myself. And I also created the series Bible. If you're going to be writing a series, definitely starting from book one, write a series Bible. Uh, in here you can have things like your main characters, what they look like, what they like, what they don't like, things with their personalities, their speech patterns, their family history, their life stories. You can also write a lot about locations. For me I had to have an entry that explains what the gifted are and what their powers are, what their limits are. There's just so many questions that are so much easier to answer if you have a series bible that tells you exactly what's going on in each book and what's happening to each character and their backstories. Once my edits were done, I sent them to my mom so that she can read it and give me her own feedback. I used that time to write backstories for the characters and to uh, replot the trilogy with a few minor details that had changed when I was writing the first book. I also had intentions of having novellas for each of the Owens women, as so I plotted out these stories too so that I would know in the future little tidbits that I can add that would be really cool and interesting callbacks. In October, I started my second draft of Prophecy, but it was also around this time that I was helping uh, with the production of a short film called Little Bird, which I was also acting in and minors coordinating, so I was very busy with that. I also got my full actor membership, so I was going to the actor offices and I had a lot of production meetings and I was just really busy and didn't devote the time that I should have to the Owens Chronicles, which is my fault. I was in my head the deadline was really, really important and I couldn't break it. In hindsight, I maybe would have pushed the date a bit to devote more time to it. I did make it, however, and I published book one in November. I believe on the 19th is when they went live. So I have here, this is what the paperback looks like with the back, very cool. And I also have a copy of the hardcover, which a hardcover really makes you feel like you're a real author. See, my picture's right there on the inside. This one's dedicated to somebody already. So when it came out, I was so busy with a bunch of other things that I really didn't promote it. Not like I didn't promote it as much as I should have, but I didn't promote it at all. I made a post on my Facebook that I had published a book and that was basically it. I didn't do any paid advertising, I didn't do any newsletter exchanges, I didn't do any of those promo sites, I didn't do a single thing to let people know that it was out. So what happened is that uh, family members and friends bought copies because they knew that it was coming out, but nobody else did. My grandparents had a Christmas party on the weekend after and they gave out free copies of the book as their like a Christmas present and I think that was like the majority of my sales. In December I was also really lazy as far as the writing and promoting and stuff was concerned because, you know, it's Christmas. It's a lot of family and fun things but not a lot of writing. In January, after I made my list of resolutions, I obviously tried to step things up a lot. I took a course on um, Amazon ads and spent, I think, about close to $100 on ads internationally. I did them in the UK, in uh, Germany, I did Spain, I did Italy, I did France, I did uh, US, and I think I made maybe 15 So it was not a smart investment, but Amazon ads is definitely something that I have to figure out. So I was glad that I got my toes wet and started trying to figure it out, but I wish I would have done it with a lot less money. 
So I replotted the book and uh, fixed any things that I had changed after the feedback from the first book being published. And then I decided to write one chapter a day, no matter what. I was working at the Montreal Auto Show at the time, so I would go early into town, write at a Starbucks for an hour before my shift started, and every single time we had a break, I was there with my notebook writing. Everybody thought I was very, very weird. I think everybody at least once asked me what in the world I was writing because I just spent my days with this book, just writing in... I had counted... Oh, that's a blank page. I counted how many pages I needed to have, like, a thousand words. So I would make sure that I had, like, I think it was six pages I needed to have before I can move on to the next chapter. And at the front of the book, I had a layout of everything that I wanted to happen in each chapter. I was back on track, and I was really excited. Then came February. I started working on the third book in the notebook again, and I also started typing up Cursed, because Cursed was the name of book two. When I finished typing up Cursed, I took a break from book three, and I worked on editing um, book two until uh, the pandemic hit. I had already sent out my book to a few beta readers. My mom had already read it as well, and I was kind of like finalizing it, but I was a member of 20 books to 50k, and there was a post where people were offering their services to kind of help out, and one girl was offering to beta read for somebody. So I figured, you know what, I had my cousin beta read, but it might be nice to have like a stranger who beta read the book as well. So I sent it to her, as well as book one. She told me that she had promise and I could have a good book, um, but this wasn't it. She was really, really nice in the way she said it, and it wasn't at all like I'm paraphrasing now. But she said like I really had to like learn better pacing, which kind of broke my heart at first. It took me a few days to write back, but she suggested these books that I should read. So I bought the books, like immediately read them, learned a lot more about plotting and pacing, and I realized that I had to change uh, the ending of book two uh, for, to make the plotting work. Like it, We had a big, huge uh, action element, and then it went down, and then it came back up. So instead, I just had it build up to the first big thing, and I moved the second big thing to the third book, which wouldn't have been so bad, only it changed everything because the big reveal at the end of book two was supposed to be the curse on the Owens woman, which now went into book three, so the title of book two can no longer be cursed. Um, so I'd already ordered the covers and everything, so I had to change the name, and I decided Destiny would be a cool name. So curse became Destiny. So after another uh, rewrite, very close to publication date, um, I finished the new draft. I also replotted the series based on this new information of changing everything up. And I got Booksprout. Uh, so Booksprout is a site where you can sign up and you can put your book uh, up for ARC copies where people will kind of download it and then they'll write a review on Amazon and Goodreads and BookBub and stuff like that. So I put Prophecy up there and it worked really, really well for Prophecy. I think 17 people downloaded it and 9 people put reviews. So it was really, really good for based on my experience with review sites. It was amazing. I've since tried it with every other book that I have and it has worked to the tune of two downloads and no reviews. By about mid-May, I was done with book two and I was so excited because I was so ahead that I had enough time that I was going to upload it early, I was going to order some proof copies, go through the proof copies, I was going to give the proof copies away as like a giveaway to my followers. I had so many plans of so many things that I wanted to do, but I accidentally put the wrong ISBN. So not for this book, but um, one of the versions of Prophecy I had uploaded with uh, an ISPN that was actually registered to Cursed. So what I had to do, because you can't change the ISPN on a book that's already been published, is that I had to change and get a new ISPN for Cursed, uh, which was really awkward because they had already written the ISPN on the back here. So after I uploaded it, it took a few, like I realized when I was uploading it, Tangram Spark, that I had the wrong ISPN. So I had to wait until Amazon could deny my book and say that the ISBN is already in use. Then I had to wait for my cover designer to change the cover so that I can have the proper ISBN on the back of the book. And then I had to re-upload it and wait for them to approve it. And it took so many tries and so many, such a long time that I didn't even know for sure if I would have the paperback available at the same time as the ebook on Amazon for, for launch date. Eventually I did, like I think I cut it really close, like I had it like a day or two ahead, so I could order ahead of time, but we made it. 
So in June I released Destiny, book two of the Owens Chronicles, and I also discovered Story Origin, which is a website where you can do newsletter swaps, you can do reader magnets, you can do review copies. It has a lot of different functions, but I found that the newsletter swaps are so beneficial for me because I have no mailing list, and all of a sudden, since I've been using them, I'm up to, I think, 230 subscribers, which is not a lot in the scheme of things, but it's so much more than the 13 that I started out with. In July, I wrote the second draft of book three with all the different changes and everything that makes it not at all what I had plotted when I first plotted the trilogy, but at least it's a cohesive story and the ending is kind of similar to what I'd originally plotted out. And I sent it out to beta readers after I sent it to my mom. I actually had two of them this time because I did a sign up with the newsletters. I got really positive feedback from the beta readers, which was really exciting. Uh, and I was worried that they're just like, oh no, no, it's great, but they actually wrote in details like why they liked it and this part was really good because of this. I also set up a giveaway for people who pre-ordered the book. It's been up for pre-order since June and anybody who pre-ordered it could enter a contest where they would win assigned paperbacks of the entire trilogy. I think every time I marketed or advertised about the giveaway, I'd get more pre-orders, but nobody was signing up for the contest. So I think I have to work to either make that clear or maybe just it's a good thing and it just encourages people to pre-order without getting any kind of contest entry. I uploaded the final book in the trilogy on August 26th. Not that I made a mistake, I put the book, because if you're in Canada right now you cannot get author copies or proofs of your books, um, not shipped to Canada at least. So I tried to stamp myself a proof and it didn't work, so what I did is I put the book up live and I put it like at a really low price and I ordered a bunch of copies so that I could have some proof copies for myself and for my mom and for other people to read and then I uploaded the book to Ingram Spark and I just changed the price on Amazon after I had ordered it and stuff like that and I put it back up to the normal price but what Amazon did is they let Ingram Spark take over or something so that the paperbacks are no longer available they're still in pre-order and my proof copies that I ordered are not shipping until the book releases in September, so I think I'm just really not meant to have a proof copy of any book before I publish, but I will work on that for the next time. Hey, this is Future Amanda. While I was editing this video, I decided it might be interesting for you guys to hear about the ending of Legacy's launch after it happened rather than telling you what I did to plan for it. So I didn't receive the proof copies before I launched on September 11th, but I did get them on the Monday after. I would have been better to get them ahead of time, but life is life. In the two weeks before I launched, every single day I posted an Instagram post uh, with a little bit of a quote from the book. To keep the readers excited until the book came out. Uh, in the future, what I would have done is maybe had longer quotes or posted them like once a week for the few months before the book came out instead of every single day for the two weeks before because I didn't get a lot of traction, which also could be because I don't have enough of an Instagram following, but I definitely want to do that for all my future launches. Uh, it helps build buzz, it's exciting, it's some marketing material, and I think it's a really cool concept. On the day of, I discounted the other books in this series. So Legacy launched at $2.99 instead of the regular price of $4.99, and I had Prophecy as free for the next five days, and Destiny had a countdown deal, so it was $0.99 cents for people in the UK and the United States. Uh, for the seven days following the launch. On the day of the launch, I used newsletter swaps, I had Facebook ads, uh, and I also had Amazon ads running. And I also did a lot of promo sites. I did Fussy Librarian, eReader News Today, Book Raid, Awesome Gang, eReader IQ, uh, Book Bassett. I'm not sure which one of the promo sites worked well. Um, I did get a lot of free downloads, but some days I got hardly any, and I can't really tell um, which promo sites were working, which ones weren't. But that's definitely something I want to look into for next time because I spent over $200 in promo sites and stuff to launch the book. I'd like to see which ones worked and which ones didn't. Monday I made a blog post and I announced the winner of my giveaway contest. Um, in the end I did get six pre-orders, which was the biggest amount that I've had so far, but the only person who signed up for the contest was my cousin, Steve. So thank you so much, Steve. Uh, <laughs> it's really awesome to not have nobody, um, but in the future I would like to give it to a stranger, possibly. So. Next time I have a giveaway, definitely participate. The odds are in your favor. Looking back on this launch of the third book of the series, um, it wasn't as successful as I was hoping it would be. I didn't make back what I spent in ads, and I didn't make back what I spent on making the book, 
but I did earn more than I have on any previous launch and whereas normally I would get a lot of paperbacks and hardcovers from my family members, this time I got a lot of ebook sales from strangers. It was really exciting to see that I have more uh, paid sales on book two than I do on book one, which means that even though I have a lot of people who've downloaded book one for free, a lot of those people are enjoying book one and they're still going on to buy book two, which is amazing for me because it's not just taking a chance on an author that they don't know. It's they're investing in me and they're wanting to continue the story. Again, like I said at the beginning of this video, this is not a tutorial, this is not a how-to, this is just saying this is how I published it. Uh, hopefully you guys can do better, you can learn from my mistakes and do the things that I thought were useful. If you enjoyed the video, please like it. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you want to have more content like this. You can also ring the bell if you want to get notified every single time I publish. Uh, it's really awesome having you guys here. Have a great week. See you next time.